On Monday, an independent political group backing Mitt Romney begins a $25 million ad campaign in nine swing states. TV ads have been a big part of presidential politics for 60 years now, but there is a difference this time around. That's because you see these commercials all over the place and not just during the news. Bill Plant has a look at the new strategy and joins us this morning from Washington. Bill, good morning to you. Well, Gail, good morning. You know, this race is so close. In fact, in our recent poll, fewer than one voter in 10 is undecided. And that means that the outcome is going to hinge on two things, persuading those who haven't made up their minds and getting supporters to turn out on Election Day. And that is why if you live in a key battleground state, you are already getting a nonstop barrage of TV ads, but not always on the usual shows. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheindlin. Her legal proceedings are immensely popular, but now, whether she likes it or not, Judge Judy has become a player in this year's political proceedings as well. That didn't happen. And so, too, have the self-proclaimed nerds of the Big Bang Theory. That's just wrong. Why? Because both have something the campaigns want, a specific audience to target. But if you think about what candidates and campaigns really care about is how many Democrats watch that show? How many Republicans watch that show? How many swing voters that watch that show? In the case of Judge Judy... Listen to me, sir. The audience is composed of large numbers of African Americans and Hispanics, key parts of President Obama's base. Nine News Now. It used to be that political campaigns focused their time and their advertising dollars on local newscasts. But Mike Heideck takes us to the National Zoo. They figured news viewers were politically engaged and likely voters. But the campaign ad buyers have gotten more sophisticated. Now they're looking uh, ethnic characteristics combined with age characteristics, combined with gender characteristics, and combining that up with their polling to try and put their messages precisely on target. So who is watching what? Cable news channels have audiences defined by their politics. On the right, caution, you are about to enter the no spin zone. And on the left, Let's play hardball. <laughs> but now ad buyers say that the choice of an entertainment channel can be equally revealing. Not only about how you'll vote, but whether you're likely to bother. The audience that watches The Real Housewives on Bravo. Get your hands off my husband. Do I have to come over there? <laughs> tends to be liberal and female, but less likely to turn out to vote. While viewers of the Golf Channel fired up at Firestone tend to be conservative, male, and likely to go to the polls on election day. <laughs> if you watch The Simpsons, you probably lean Democrat, but don't bother to vote. No! The campaigns know the value of targeting. We're constantly looking about uh, at how we spend our dollar to see to it that we're speaking directly to those folks who are most likely to be making up their minds. The audience research gurus have sliced and diced this very finely. They know who you are, what you're watching, and how you're likely to vote. Gail, Jeff. Bill, so tell us more about who we are here. Very interesting. I mean, some of the other examples here of some of the people who watch some of these shows. Well, for example, uh, if in prime time, if you watch NCIS, then you're tending Republican, but you're kind of low on the likely to vote scale. But on the other hand, if you watch The Mentalist, then not only are you tending Republican, but you're very likely to go to the polls and vote. Now, if you watch The Office then, or The Modern Family, <clears throat> you're sort of right on the middle there. You could be either Democrat or Republican, and you're fairly likely to vote, but not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, if you watch The Good Wife, then you're almost certain to vote Democrat, and you're highly likely to vote. And if you watch you CBS this morning... You're smart and informed. <laughs> I, I, I like that characterization. <laughs> Bill, let's talk about the negative ads for just a second. There seem to be a lot of them out there. Are they persuasive or are they turning people off? What, what does your research show about that? You know what? A lot of people would like to say, well, the negative ads are just a turn off. But you know what? They're not. In our most recent poll of swing states, 58 percent in two states, 56 in another said, yeah, they're not so bad. And the thing is, politicians believe that they work. Right now, in one survey that was done, 98% of the president's ads are negative and 96% of Romney's ads are negative. So you know that they think it works. And the evidence suggests, sorry, that it does. That it does. It's All a right. crazy number, 98%. Yeah, very high. Thank you, Bill Plant. Always good to see you.